Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is David Thompson, I'm pastor here at First Lutheran Church of Chickasha. In fact, this is my last Sunday, I am retiring. So welcome, and I am excited that you are joining us for this condensed YouTube service for Pentecost 4. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. But for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May he who began this good work within you bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Let's pray the colic for the day. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Continue to send your messengers to preserve your people in true peace that by the preaching of your word, your church may be kept free from all harm and danger through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this Sunday is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, beginning at verse 10. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice greatly with her. All you who mourn over her, for you will nurse and be satisfied at her comforting breast. You will drink deeply and delight in her overflowing abundance. For this is what the Lord says. I will extend peace to her like a river, and the wealth of nations like a flooding stream. You will nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. When you see this, your heart will rejoice, and you will flourish like grass. The hand of the Lord will be made known to his servants, but his fury will be shown to his foes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is taken from the letter to the Galatians chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to someone else, for each one should carry his own load. Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, but at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything, 
what counts as a new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, even to the Israel of God. Finally, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is found in the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God is near you. When you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that sticks to our feet we wipe off against you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God is near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon in the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted up to the skies? No, you will go down to the depths. He who listens to you listens to me. He who rejects you rejects me. But he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like nightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 26 years ago, Sharon and I drove a moving van and a minivan into Chickasha full of kids over the viaduct at 8 p.m. Sunday evening on June 6th during a sustained drought, by the way. The Super 8 Motel 
was just what we should have expected. As we lugged our suitcases across superheated asphalt that stuck to the bottom of our shoes. The next day, I was installed as your pastor by Circuit Counselor Reverend Mayor of St. John Lawton. I remember the aroma of the small office, now a filing room, and it still brings back that wonderful memory. It's not a bad smell, but a distinctive aroma of a dedicated space. Not even unpacked, the next day I received a call from Dorothea Thorson. Her husband Lloyd had just passed away. I never got to meet him before I had to lead his funeral service and comfort the family and congregation. How can a solitary, inexperienced stranger do that? Be effective for souls in the most difficult and critical of times. Because together, we are part of the plan God put into effect in our gospel text and continues to carry it out through the pastoral ministry and the priesthood of all believers. Pastors are often told to multiply your ministry. And why not? A pastor has the most joyous calling any man can ever have to share Christ Jesus and his saving death and resurrection with people. And I have been blessed to share it with you, dear people. Over 26 years of ministry, I got to touch hundreds, maybe thousands of lives with the name of Jesus. But there's one thing that adds to that, raising up another young man for the ministry, effectively multiplying my ministry through his. Another is to hear the sisters gathering for a Bible study during the week to specifically meet their needs. And another is men who stand up in their God-given headship roles, managing the emergency food pantry, leading services, proclaiming a sermon, and seeing to it that the sheep are fed in the absence of the pastor. This multiplies ministry. Jesus, as you know, multiplied his ministry. He chose 12 men to be disciples and sent them out as apostles multiplying his ministry by 12. And in our text today, he multiplies it six times over when he sends out the 72. You know, the interesting thing is that Jesus is the one person who didn't need to multiply his ministry. He could have done everything by himself. Maybe I regret that I kind of did that here but he wisely chose to use others. They must have been extraordinary men, right? Nope. Just sinful, fallible ones like the 12, the 72, myself and you. No matter how imperfectly we do it, our magnificent, joyous job is the same, to carry out the plan day in and day out through every changing season of life, through changes of leadership, and the opportunities that are presented to us anew each day. That is why I am not afraid of this change. God has planned for it. Are you excited? Are you ready now for the waters to part and lovers of God's word to start pouring in the doors without any effort or uncomfortableness to you? And what does it say here? The Lord appointed 72 others, that is, beside the 12 apostles, and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Notice Jesus doesn't ask for volunteers who will work in some time for him when their schedules allow it. He appoints. See, every Christian disciple is qualified and certified as those who have been snatched from the fires of hell. They are sent out by twos. For where two or more are gathered or work, in his name, there he is among them. And a rope of three strands is not easily broken. 
If something needs doing, grab another member to do it with you and you will be blessed with the presence of Christ. And here's why that is important. Jesus says, go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Now, some think the lambs are pastors and the wolves are the complaining and manipulative parishioners. Not so. Every baptized Christian is the Lord's lambs. The wolves are temptation, false teaching, worldly priorities, godless wisdom offered on the internet. Interests that take time away from daily Bible reading, envy, and fear. Well, never mind the wolves, though. The great shepherd of the Lamb sent me 30 years ago and sent Pastor Nelson four years ago to the seminary so that we can feed and multiply the lambs without even a pause. Here is what we get to do. And only the wolves keep us from it. We get to say peace to each house and town we visit. This was the new greeting of the 72. For the content of their message was the peace of God that passes all understanding. A peace not only from God, but with God. Sure, Pastor Nelson will bring the word of peace. That we are reconciled to God by the cross of Jesus. But we do it so that you can speak that peace in every home you enter and group you participate in. People will look at you funny. Well, good. It will make others think and wonder about that peace you have and freely offer. Now, Jesus says the 72 were to take no money bag, knapsack, or sandals but establish table fellowship in a house church wherever they were welcome. What does it take to be a church? We worry about the money. And if that is what a church is, then every congregation has reason to worry. Even the biggest church has money woes. But what does it say here? It is about those of faith gathered around word and sacrament. So don't go shopping around for a church this marketing you with programs. Jesus says, stay in that house, eating and drinking whatever they give you. Do not move around from house to house. And when Pastor Nelson gets here, the table, wear, and curtains are going to look different. But it's the same house, the same eating and drinking of Christ himself. We sometimes feel as though we are in competition with healing churches. Are you kidding me? The 72 were sent where Christ himself was coming to restore what was broken in creation. Well, that's our gig. Your pastor, along with you, pray for the physically sick, but also come with the medicine of immortality. Everyone faces death, but Lutherans proclaim the kingdom of God has come near and with it, life eternal. How can we simple folk make such a claim? Look in our text. The 72 disciples speak for Jesus, as do pastors today and yourselves. Listen, the one who hears you hears me, verse 16a. Jesus multiplied his ministry so that more people could see him speaking in the flesh. Disciples, we carry in our own bodies the redemption and peace of Jesus. You may have wondered about the words I use, the words Pastor Nelson will use. In the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, it is the authority of a pastor to preach, to announce forgiveness, to retain sins. And then by extension, you as a disciple speak God's word, forgive those who trespass against you and withhold forgiveness from the stubborn and unrepentant for the purpose of bringing them to repentance and absolving them. The plan intends for Christians to speak for Jesus. So our hearers receive law and gospel, the word as from Jesus himself. As such, our ministry can never be trendy or woke or even popular. Think about it. Others scoff at infant baptism 
and the real bodily presence in the supper. Well, that's got to be an assurance for our faith because the servant is not above his master. The plan involves a lot of responsibility and serious consequences, though. Many Lutherans in the Bible Belt have resigned themselves to being silent so as not to incur criticism. I get it, but we're missing the point. The one who rejects you rejects me, verse 16b. If we are faithfully and unapologetically sharing God's word, we should expect the pattern seen in the prophets and prefigured in Jesus' own resurrection. But may we never feel so privileged that we reject the pastor sent to serve us. Because what we handle is big. Some think of Jesus as their buddy, the pastor as their buddy. But listen to this. The one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. Verse 16c. You see, it wasn't about the 72 or about me, or it will not be about Pastor Nelson. Rejecting God's only Savior, his only way of salvation, whether they reject what they read of him, hear of him in a sermon, or sing of the Christ in a hymn, is to fall under God's wrath. Get yourselves to Bible class. Ask every question imaginable. Be equipped by your pastor to lead people as best you can to welcome Jesus. The result, of course, in our text, the 72 disciples returned with great joy. You know, I get great satisfaction from building things. Frank gets a bang out of programming stuff. Cheryl takes pride in delivering the mail in one piece. Terry is a trusted and skilled journeyman who can handle power, electrical power safely. But none of those things can compare to the joy of being part of setting a captive free. As we hear from our pastor and say to our neighbor, thus says the Lord, and your sins are forgiven, ah, that's when Satan is defeated. Jesus saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. That's a passage I have often attributed to our Lord's omniscience and presence at the casting out of the devil and all his angels for their first rebellion against God. While that can be true, the context here is in connection to the mission and ministry of the 72, and by extension, pastors in their vocations today, and the Christian who daily speaks the word of truth in love. Ah, oh, and the devil hates that. But our joy is made complete, not in the defeat of the devil, but knowing that our names are written in heaven and the devil can do nothing about it. I retire from pastoral ministry today, but not from the plan God put into effect in our gospel text and continues to carry out through the pastoral ministry and the priesthood of all believers. I love God. I love First Lutheran Church, my family, the good old USA, motorcycles, fireworks, and guns. That's how you get the 4th of July into a sermon. <laughs> but it's the first two, God and the church, that makes it possible for a solitary, inexperienced stranger to be effective for souls in the most difficult and critical of times. Now may the peace that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds through true faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty Father, your kingdom has come near to us through the preaching of the word of Jesus. He alone gives us life and makes us your household, your family, where you dwell by your Holy Spirit. Enable us to receive your word with trusting hearts, knowing that the message we hear today is the living and active voice of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When you sent out workers into your harvest field, O Lord, you equipped them to proclaim the message of peace and salvation to all who would listen. Even when we uh, face rejection as they do, strengthen us and strengthen them uh, through your ongoing presence in our lives. We praise you for doing the same thing every single day for your people. Even as your church goes through challenging times, 
Remind us that your mission continues and your presence remains with us always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful King, equip all pastors, teachers, missionaries, and servants of your church to know your love and declare it boldly to those who have called them to serve. Bless the partnership of the gospel that is ours in the household of faith, that we may work together as brothers and sisters in Christ in the ventures you have prepared for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing Lord, you give the pure medicine of your word and suffer to bless and nourish the souls of those who trust in you. So we lift up to you, O Lord, those in need, a Gracie Rowe, who will go into surgery to remove a pin in her wrist, also Tierra Rowe, uh, having a heart monitor on, may it lead and guide uh, her caregivers into knowing exactly how to resolve uh, her circumstances. We pray for Jerry Gherkin, Debbie Fritter, um, Ginger Hebb, Elliot, Lisa Stonehawker, Kelly, uh, Betty Moling, Bob Walden, Harold Moling, Marcy Clark, Dorothea Thorson, Willie Mae Gherkin, Evelyn Lyles, and Jerome Erstman. Thank you, O Lord, that you hear and heal. Answer and bless all those who call out to you for mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, you are exalted above all nations, rulers, and authorities on earth. Today we pray for our nation as we celebrate the anniversary of our independence. Continue to bless our country and keep us mindful of your blessings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our son, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.